welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast from the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And you know what? We decided we wanted to improve the quality <laughs> of this podcast. I mean, the only way we could think to do it was to bring some much better podcasters on to come and help the show out a little bit. So if you are familiar with Haunted Attraction Podcast, you no doubt are familiar with our special guests this week. They are Brian Foreman and Daryl Plunkey of Haunt Topic Radio, of Haunter's Hangout, and a million other things as we're going to go into. Haunter's Toolbox. Haunter's Toolbox. Ah, I knew I was going to screw it up. It was inevitable. Yeah. Ah. But anyways, Daryl, Brian, how are you doing? I'm blushing from this great introduction. Like you guys are wonderful. Um, thank you very much for having us on the show. Yeah, well, it's, it's been too long in the making. <laughs> yes. Well, you were generous enough to have us on back when we were just two Yahoo's starting out, yeah. and now we're just two Yahoo's who have 118 episodes. Uh, <laughs> so things yeah, have we do. Things have improved um, in, um, numerically. <laughs> But yes, you had us on way back in the beginning, and now we finally get to return the favor. And I'm so excited about this because we we sort of done the roadmap of the episode. We're going to hear all about your history, and most importantly, this really cool new project you've launched. Right. So I'm very excited about all of this. So I, I guess the first thing to ask is the same question people ask us all the time: How'd you two yahoos meet? Well, uh, I was sort of. We had a, uh, a festival here in, in my city, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And one of the things I, I've enjoyed Halloween for years. So I was trying to promote all of the Halloween things that were running around Edmonton, Alberta. And I created um, with the, associated with some other friends and, and some acquaintances that I'd met something called the Edmonton Halloween Festival. Uh, and I had started producing some well, we'll call them television, uh, Deadmonton TV. I was trying to do episodes that were six minutes and 66 seconds long, which is <laughs> seven minutes and six seconds. Yeah, I'm about to say. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, you know, six sixty six seconds long. Uh, and I had a character named uh, Pumpkin Ed. So I had, it was a pumpkin head character. And it was kind of to promote all of the stuff that was here happening in the city and other artists and people that were out there. And, uh, I'm not exactly sure if I found Brian or Brian found me. Do you remember Brian? It was, I think we were, it was either in a chat room or a forum or something. <clears throat> and we just happened to become friends. And then we realized that we kind of shared the same passion of, you know, uh, podcasting and videos. And we're like, Hey, we should just kind of put our heads together and create something of our own. So and at, right. at that time, there was a, a lot of different um, podcasts out there. Uh, and we mm. wanted to be something a little unique. And most of the other podcasts were an hour or two hours long in some cases. And they covered a variety of things. They would have news events and they'd talk to all sorts of different people. So we decided to try and be unique by calling it Haunt Topic and having each show for the most part focus on one topic well that answered one of my upcoming questions where'd you get the name from <laughs> yeah i'll take that off the uh, imaginary notes yeah. i have in front of me so how long ago did this all start well it was we're looking back um actually we just hit our seven year uh, anniversary is in february congrats so well, uh, i was in my early yeah, 20s so. when you guys met yeah. <laughs> so were, so were we. There, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm sticking to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you guys met and decided to do Haunt Topic. Um, you know, what, how, I guess, what was the genesis of the podcast idea other than you simply wanted a podcast or was that the genesis? Not that I have anything to talk. Anyone who knows our genesis. <laughs> well, well, we've got this domain. We might as well do something with it. Well, if you've ever heard our show, we both like to talk, um, and we figure that other people like to talk too. And I, I, I like to both talk and listen to other people. So 
because I'd already been doing some stuff uh, on vi- on the video platform, um, you know, when when Brian and I were kind of discussing, it's like, oh, did you listen to this podcast? Did you listen to that podcast? And it's like, well, maybe maybe we should do our own because they weren't hitting some of the people or the topics uh, that necessarily you know we thought people should know about. So, and and um, I was coming off. If you guys remember Rotting Flesh Radio, that was I was doing some segments for them uh, when they were still active. And actually, a big scary show was branched off of them as well. Uh, True Badger and Jim and Storm. Right. And um, so they all were part of uh, Rotting Flesh Radio. Well, that podcast shut down. So I was, of course, looking for something to start of our own. And then ran into Daryl and like, well, we can do this ourselves. So then we just, where Daryl just kind of picked up. Yeah. We wanted to do a, like you guys do, you pick one topic a week. We don't, we used to be weekly before we started doing our professional wants and all of our extra yeah, projects. Lives <laughs> and things to do and social yeah. lives and yeah. uh, right. You know, so yeah. In your mom's basement. <laughs> Uh huh. I mean, you know, you guys realize how hard it is to put one, you know, one to come up with an episode every single week. And um, we were usually doing interviews too. At, so we were interviewing, you know, three or four people a month, publishing the show, you know, releasing it. So, um, but yeah, we've progressed. Now we do one a month and we kind of make a, a little bit bigger show. Like we go to Hong Kong and it'll be like our Hong Kong episode was over two, two hours long, but, you know, we only have one a month. So that you can just kind of throw it all together. Um, yeah, I'll yeah. say I'll, I'll say to make another confession here. There's an embarrassingly large number of Sunday nights we're sitting around going, "Oh crap, we have to do Haunt Weekly. What do you want to talk about?" <laughs> Quick, think of something. Right. Yeah. That is that might have happened a handful of times in yeah. at least 117 episodes. Well, you need some of those that, dice with words on them so you can just <laughs> roll them. And it's like, oh, we're going to talk about left-handed haunters. Okay, we're going to talk about left-handed haunters today. <laughs> well, well, uh, well, we can uh, interview yeah. Ellie. We can interview Ellie, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah it's, it's such a um, so, yes, I, I know the feeling and definitely understand the move. Mm-hmm. So... After launching the podcast, at some point, you guys decided to expand because you're crazy. <laughs> and Yeah, we didn't have enough to do in our lives, so yeah. we thought, let's fill it all up. Yeah, um, let's just... And- you're like hoarders, all, aren't you? <laughs> all of that time that you had to do, you know, <clears throat> that you went from doing weekly to monthly, that's just gone now, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, the time you saved, good move. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's funny. Um, I'm coming up on my uh, uh, is it the fourth year? Uh, working at a haunt here in Edmonton. Actually, it'll come up, it's coming up the fifth year, actually. Um, of a haunt here in Edmonton, Brian, you've been running yours for a couple of years now. Actually, this will be uh, we're going into our fourth season already. Yeah, it's wow. it's just amazing because we'd all been doing that before. We'd been the actors and it's like, okay, let's step back. Let's do the radio show. Let's interview all these other people and kind of realized we actually missed, you know, doing the haunt stuff, getting out there in front of the people. Uh, right. And and it's it's nice to be a face on radio but it's also nice to be a face in people's faces. Right. And plus we were, we were also kind as we progressed, if you go back and listen to our very first episode as, you know, home honors and making props and, or, you know, Daryl would make props and do a YouTube video. And you can see our progression because we were interviewing people that we were kind of wanting to know more about stuff as we were progressing in our haunt career so we would get people on about scare acting and running your attraction and so that kind of helped us start our own stuff so that and i eventually got you know opened up the dead factory and daryl got in with the uh but daryl you did some more stuff in the past as well right with oh the, this um, yeah that was way before uh, i was doing i spent uh 50 years 15 years at a local historic park um 
which part of its claim to fame is uh, Brad Pitt filmed the uh, um, Jesse James movie in in the park. Um, so that's that put Edmonton on the map. You know, it, other it's, things. it's very interesting. I'll say this. I've lived in several places that have had stuff like that. Like I've I, I've I spend a lot of time in the town where Steel Magnolias was filmed. Oh. Yeah. And you actually can take the Steel Magnolias tour. If anyone actually remembers that film, God help you. <laughs> I remember um, it. But, I kind of have to remember yeah. it. Yeah, so if you go to Natchitoches, Louisiana, you can take the Steel Magnolias tour and see all the plaques where all the scenes were shot. It's it's a thing. Yeah. I, can't, I can't say much else about it. But yeah, so the, the keep your claim to fame, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'd, I'd spent 15 years working at the historic park for their Halloween event. And uh, it was a lot of working. Uh, you, you had a lot of kids in the crowd because it was an all ages show. And some of the uh, influences in my past from my childhood and stuff kind of came out and I became a very campy character uh, in almost everything that I did. So I, I've got a weird sense of humor to start with. So there was always puns. I would try and entertain both the adults and the kids. And I was also a setup man. I tended to, uh, set the mood, tell the story and pass them on through the other people that were actually going to scare them for the most part. So you were front of how that's basically my job at my haunt in front of house guy, crack a few jokes, get a few laughs, let them know the story, you know, set yeah. the mood and answer any questions. God help us the questions. In in uh, many cases, though, it wasn't just, it, it wasn't necessarily a front of house because the way the historic park works, it was all outside. Uh, yeah. And the, um, the one street was basically set in the 1885 era and we got to run different um, vignettes for a one story along the street. So there was generally a story, whether it was uh, um, some sort of disease outbreak or the, whether it was, you know, the werewolves versus the vampires sort of thing, whatever the theme was for that street in the year. And each of the, um, the places had a, were a vignette. So people would wait outside. Remember this is in Canada and it was freaking cold, uh, <laughs> often snowing. And, uh, so they'd be waiting outside, they'd get in and you got three, five minutes at the most to run a dozen people through whatever it is. And then you kick them out and send the next people in because, you know, they've been, so you, you didn't have a lot of time necessarily, uh, to just interact with them. You had to get them in there, yep. get, get your, your, your stick done and, and, and get them back out with giving them entertainment. So yep, exactly as a result, I'd ended up eating, um, you know, meal worms, um, just to, to provoke a reaction. I started off my first year. I think I was an undertaker and I had a, a tape measure in my hand and I would, you know, measure people up in the shoulders and, and stuff like that before sending them off into a dark room where, Oh gee, this coffin wasn't empty earlier today. Oh, well, bye-bye. <laughs> you know, little things like, uh, it was an Egyptologist one year where I'd remove the, the lid off the coffin to show them my new mummy and he was gone. And suddenly he would burst in the back door and there was an audience plant. So he would grab the audience member and there's the plant and take them out. Meanwhile, there was another one of the plants standing outside in the next group, you know, so we could do this every few minutes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, very cool. Yeah, it was, it was nice. a lot of fun. Okay. Um, so Brian, how did you get your start real yeah. quick? Man, how far you want to go back guys? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, we only got 50 minutes and we got a lot of stuff to get through. So uh, right. I'll, I'll start off. Well, I'll start off when I started, um, always left Halloween as a kid, you know, scaring people in the front yard and, um, but really professionally, my brother, um, was about 13 years ago, uh, invited me to scare a local haunted attraction. Oh, it's about 30 minutes away and just scare act. And I was like, Oh, there's really, I mean, you can really just go to a haunted house and scare act and be a, <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll go, I'll come try it out. And then, uh, of course that just started a fire and I was like, okay, I can do this. And I was there for 
Every year they were open, that place shut down. Me and my brother decided to do something in his property in the woods, about two acres in the back of his house. We did that for three years. They got shut down because we weren't per code per se. We were just doing it for the love of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so they shut us down. Um, That, of course, you know, you're honor. You have to be doing something creative creative all the time so it's like okay i gotta do something else what can i do what can i do and i started scary visions which was just a blog and that 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 led to helping out uh, ryan flesh radio with some uh audio podcast segments and stuff that shut down me and daryl met met each other started on topic radio and as that progressed i started home haunting did that for four four years and then that led into uh, me outgrowing my garage, starting the Dead Factory three years ago. Now we're a commercial haunt. And then I'm, and of course, we're still doing Haunt Topic Radio, doing the Dead Factory, and then other projects that are, I'm sure you guys are going to hit on in a minute. So. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> the next one is the one I know probably most users of faith, most haunters on Facebook are immediately familiar with which is haunters toolbox the facebook group feels like we're talking about the various editions <laughs> yes <laughs> um so how did haunters toolbox come about and haunters toolbox was actually the name of my newsletter that i had started with um Han topic Han topic was okay if you signed up for Han topic newsletter it was called the haunters toolbox and we provided of course our current episodes plus i had like 12 different blog post articles in there of scare acting and leading your crew and set design and special effects makeup and stuff that I'd taken over the years and put in the email newsletter. Mm -hmm. And then Facebook came out with the the Facebook groups because Facebook pages weren't getting the reach they were, you know, used to get back in the day. So I was like, well, let's try one of these, one of these groups. And I decided to make it a closed group. That way I could, kind of filter the people that were coming in. Um, And then, you know, we have almost, uh, well, I know we have over 8,000 members right now. So that just kind of progressed slowly, organically. People heard about it. And we try to, you know, post a question in there once a day. And it's all about, I mean, we have homeowners in there. We have haunt owners. We have special effects people. And they find out from their friends. And that just kind of grown organically and we just kind of keep that um going every day and people you know add a few people every day to it that's how that got started yeah it's it's interesting that it started from an email newsletter and then moved as to a facebook group though to me that's it's Mm -hmm. an interesting shift um right sorry i i wanted more because you know you can only get so personable through email and you know, you're an email address and you can respond back and forth. And I wanted a community aspect to, I mean, there's people that are in the group that aren't on the newsletter and there's people on the newsletter because I have like an email link. that says, Hey, go, go join our Facebook group. So I wanted it to be more community driven or interactive with, you know, other people. And um, that kind of led us into Honor's toolbox website because I noticed people were still, you know, kind of scattered. So now I'm, we started Hunter's Toolbox um, community there to try to get more, um, because we get on once a month now for training and stuff uh, as part of our paid, paid membership. And so we do that and we're starting to get really, you know, starting to know people by name and it's only taken us seven years to, you know, do it, but (laughs) I wanted I wanted to get more personal with people and actually know, you know, who they are, what they're struggling with. You know, if they have a haunted attraction, they're their home haunted, they want to try to go to, you know, start a commercial haunted attraction. So we can we can kind of tailor, you know, talk to them better and give them more uh, advice and tips. And we get uh, professionals on every month to teach a topic about a certain or again, haunt topics. Or you know, we like to focus on one topic. Um, 
because we're so distracted anyway. So it's like, all right, we need something to keep us grounded. What are some of the, sorry, what are some of the ones that are coming up that are people can look forward to? Um, I just got it. We see uh, last this last month. I did one on starting your haunted attraction without lots of money because um, that's kind of how I started mine, uh, just mm-hmm. by bootstrapping and growing. So we did that one, um, and then this in March, March thirteenth, that uh, we have Bart Butler and Michael Edwards on. They've been in the industry for well, uh, between both of them over over sixty years of experience. So they're going to come on and. Um, so it's like a haunt expert masterclass and they're going to answer all questions. Um, anything goes from scare acting. They're just going to let you know, you know, if you have a question about anything, they're going to help you solve your problem. Um, so it's more of an intimate class. Um, we have one on yeah. not, uh, a starting a nonprofit haunt. Uh, we're going to do one on a see Dana Martin's coming um on she taught one that she taught one in the hong kong the employees and volunteers class she's going to come on and do that one leonard pickle is going to come on and do one designing your haunt on a budget um so we have uh let's see we have one on marketing coming up there's 12 so yeah we got 12 coming up so one a month yeah let me know if you want to do one on copyright. Uh, <laughs> I actually, I actually had uh, on you work. had you on my list, Jonathan. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, not putting you on the spot or anything. Just saying. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll I, I think this idea has come up before, and they are the, the ones that proposed it. Yes, I think they are. I think uh, my memory is a little <laughs> slow today. I think you're absolutely right. Um, so yeah, I think you have um, a, I think okay, you have a, that, we, a website class too that you taught, right? Too, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think we kind of blew by a very important point here, which is. The uh, relaunch of the Haunters Toolbox website at HauntersToolbox.com. Or right. upgrade. What would you call it? A relaunch, upgrade? I'm not really sure how to word it. You made changes. Yeah, yeah. It was it was a bit of a big project in the making. I think if I look back on my posts that I started, my pages I started was like three years ago. Because we had had we had had individual seminars that we taught three years ago. We have um, Alan Hops on scare acting. Leonard Pickle has two design courses. We recorded them. Uh, people were live, had a chat room. Uh, we recorded them, and then we were we were selling those individually, and on hauntopic.com. dot com. But people wanted a place to buy them um, to get the new ones that were coming up. So instead of trying to sp- to have it piece by piece, I built Haunters Toolbox.com to kind of throw everything together as all one package. So, so now there's three different tiers. If you have a free side, you can anybody can be free member. Um, we've included some YouTube videos in there. So I've I've just stored a lot of YouTube videos over the years, and you can access all those without leaving the site. Um, there's a dashboard, there's a calendar that you guys help out with, Crystal. Mm-hmm. Um, of keeping the calendar uh, updated with all of our, with all the in- industry events that are coming up because you guys are staying on top of that. Um, so there's different things you can access. And then the, there's a mid-level uh, package that just gives you all of our past seminars, plus all the videos and stuff too that the free members get. And then the third package, you get all of our, all the past videos plus all the upcoming videos throughout the year. And then you get all those free. So instead of piece by piece buying a class here and there, you get all the classes for a year and that's a yearly membership. So it's kind of like a membership site that that has all the education included in it. And you also at the highest tier have uh, mentorship and business coaching. Yes. Yes. We noticed. Yeah, we have, um, we have another Facebook group that's secret. And then we, you mm-hmm. have access to me and Daryl and all of our, all of our experts that come on to teach, they get thrown in that group and they're there to ask questions. It's kind of a private online coaching area. And then plus I have um, members that are signing up They're you know, they're, they're messaging me every day or well, not every day, but you know, they have questions and I help them along the way. Daryl's there to help. So it's kind of you get more access to us because we can't focus on everybody all the time. So mm-hmm. this kind of keeps things a little bit 
more intimate. Um, we can focus on our higher members. You know, you always have access to our free stuff. You know, we've yeah. been doing it for so many years, but we just, we're trying to kind of focus more on helping people that we can help with the time that we have. Cause you yeah. know, we all, know so, we all um, have so much time left in the day. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's also good because with that private group and with um, some of the other groups that you run, if somebody has a question, it might be a question that's shared by a lot of people. So then it gets answered once, you know, instead of everybody having to ask you the same thing. Right. Yeah. yeah and the what's the rule of IT? It's 99.99% sure you're not the first idiot with the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever that problem exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um, I've got to say, you know, I've seen um, there's a lot. There's actually a couple other organizations out there that do this kind of annual subscription system. I think this is the first one I've seen that's priced in this range mm-hmm. um, that gives this kind of access. And I think that's really, really useful, especially for haunters who are starting out and, you know, maybe have more generalized questions. Right. So I think that's, that's a, a really, really good, really good tool there. And like I said, the um, you do four live master classes uh, per year, four live Ask the Expert online sessions. This is a really really neat ser- service you guys are offering here. And I, 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 I you, you, you're like me. You're bad at promoting your own stuff. Sometimes you haven't tooted your own <laughs> horn a whole lot. <laughs> well, there's we're we're not here for our egos. We love to share information, right? Um, and, and that's, that's what it's about because I personally want everybody to be as good as I want to be. And we don't need to fight. There's enough customers to go around. So let's train us, train you so that you can, you know, have entertain your customers. That's in the end, that's what it's all about. Uh, and it's just as entertaining for us to do this and meet some of these people. It's great fun. And I got to say that your point there about not fighting, I think is so important. Mm -hmm. We always say on this podcast, you know, the competition isn't the haunt down the road. It's the concert they could be going to. It's the, you know, the, the, the party they could be at. It's the other things they could do. It's the football game. Oh, I had tickets for the game tonight. Oh, never Mm -hmm. mind. (laughs) (laughs) But I'd rather be here. Oh, And what game is on Thursday? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. I, I just pulled that off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. Yeah, none of us are very good at sports. <laughs> at least no. keeping up with it. Because uh, we're all too busy haunting. Well, exactly. That's yeah, our sport. I, I run a couple of um, pools for, uh, well, I, I'm participating in a hockey pool. Um, I just finished doing one for Big Brother. Uh, Survivor is starting. Though Those are more my kind of sports. I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm good in the pool. Well, in pools, right. actually. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And going back to the the Haunt Master, which is the Haunt Master membership, you and um, you and Crystal, Jonathan, and Crystal, you get you get a ma- Haunt Master membership for helping out with the calendar. So anytime you guys want access yeah. to any of those videos or any of those trainings, you're, yeah, you're we, invited. We've actually so. been poking around some this past week. Yeah. Past few days. Um. And and definitely sniffing. I, yeah, I went into today and and spent my lunch okay, hour. Oh. <laughs> spent my lunch hour perusing. Yes, and seeing what all was there, so we could actually at least talk semi intelligently <laughs> about it. Which I know, I know, time a thing. new thing to try on this podcast: speaking semi intelligently. But since you guys were on here, we figured we had to give it a shot. Um, <laughs> You can't just be totally upstaging us. <laughs> Have you heard us? We're not always intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we well, invite smart I, guests on like you. That, that's I, why I, we invite <laughs> smart guests and we do also editing. Uh, I blame the spray paint fumes uh, for uh, everyone. Okay. I find inhalation. That <laughs> inhalation. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's inhalation. So, yeah. Um, now, in addition to everything you're already doing, because apparently – you weren't busy and active enough. Mm-hmm. I really don't know what the hell is wrong with you guys. Uh, <laughs> you have Slackers. now lost another venture. And this one is on Kickstarter right now. 
It is. It is. Uh, it's called Scarret Badges. And what it is, is it's a merit badge system for the haunter and, and horror fan. Um, and I really wanted to start off focusing on the haunted attraction industry uh, for this. And then uh, if things go well, maybe we'll branch out to to allow the, the regular horror okay. people in. Now, I have to ask the obvious question. What the hell are they? And where the hell did the idea come from? Back to back. <laughs> well, um, just like the Boy Scouts and the military have badges and awards and pins for certain accomplishments, or if you're a gamer, you know, you've got the uh, accomplishments and achievements that you can get little badges for your profile and that sort of thing. Um, I, I love the the system of earning something, the gamification of, uh, you know, the success and the reward that you get. And in talking with several haunters, um, you know, on our show and stuff, we realized that it's, it's kind of tough to retain your, your acting talent, your building talent. Um, there's, there's some people that yes, they, they move on. There's some people that aren't cut out for it, but sometimes you do things and, and sometimes actors are a little fickle and they feel that, you know, they're not getting uh, enough attention or rewards or recognition. Um, and that's because as, as haunt owners and stuff, you're always so busy. You got 10 million things to do and the actors don't necessarily see it from the ownership side. Uh, you know, we, we, we hide things from them. They don't need to know the minutia, all of, of all of the things that are happening. Uh, but we want them to be the best actors that we can. And, um, well, one of the things that, as Brian has mentioned, you know, well, we, we met up and we did this. We didn't actually physically meet until 2016 haunt con. Uh, mm -hmm. we'd been doing a radio show together for five years, uh, had done lots of video together, but we never actually met. And at like that same, yeah, <laughs> my, my and, previous podcast co-host, we had the same relationship. <laughs> yeah. And, um, when we, we finally met and we were hanging around, you know, a lot of the things that happen at a convention like that is what happens between the sessions. And, uh, we got in there one morning and sat down at a table with a few other people having some, some breakfast. And I was really impressed because there was six or seven people from one haunted house that all had black matching haunt shirts on their sleeves. They had the names of who they were, uh, what their position was, what years they worked. And, uh, they had the logo on the back and it was just like, damn, you are a sharp looking crew. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was the crew from Ruby falls. Cool. And, uh, you know, so we're, we're joking and talking and, and it's like, man, this, you, you guys look great. This, this is good. So I thought that'd be kind of neat to, to do for our haunt. Right. And then, uh, we were at another, um, on a holiday actually. And I was sitting in an airport and boy scouts, there was a whole group of them. There must've been 60 boy scouts, several different troops, all different I locations. That's a pack. I believe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they weren't a herd. Yeah. <laughs> um, they weren't all from the same troop yet you knew who they were or what they were by their uniform, right? Mm -hmm. They're all dressed similarly, but there was differences between them. Uh, they weren't wearing their ceremonial sashes with all the badges, but it's like, damn, I, I want to make a hunter scout shirt. And I, I thought boy scouts might have an issue with calling it the hunter scouts. So I'm a very punny guy. And, and I, wrote a bunch of ideas down and, and I just couldn't find anything. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, well, they're merit badges. They're, 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 they're scare it badges, cha-ching, you know? So that was the, uh, that was the impetus, uh, seeing other people wearing their shirts, seeing the boy scouts and knowing, uh, Brian's military background being in the Navy. It's like, okay, w would this work, Brian? Do you think so? Uh, and, and we spent a whole bunch of time talking about it. Um, 
And uh, when we were at HauntCon 2018, we uh, went there in the capacity of Haunter's Toolbox and Scarret Badges. So we chatted people up. We gave away a bunch of prototype badges that we had made, uh, our first run of badges. And we'd actually given them away. Um, one of the badges is our most dedicated badge. And it's basically a tombstone with the current year or the year of your haunt on it. And those are given out to the actors who have completed uh, 75% of your, uh, participated in 75% of the nights that your haunt is open. And then we also had ones that had a, have a gold border and those ones are for those actors that had perfect attendance and we were able uh, to surprise our actors with them this year and say okay here's some awards yeah you get this trophy or you get this gift card uh, but now there's a little patch that you can wear on your sleeve or on your hat or put it in your car or on your bag or and it just it was that little extra bit of recognition you know to say hey you had perfect attendance. Now you have this gold bordered badge that people are going to go, what's, why do you have a tombstone on your sleeve? That's got a gold border on it. It's like, well, I had perfect attendance at the haunt last year. I'm a haunt actor. So it, it I think w we found that, that it's going to give a little bit of recognition and, and, um, uh, a reward to those actors that you have in your haunt. Uh, we now have actors in our haunt that didn't get any of the badges because they didn't, you know, participate three quarters of the nights. And it's like, oh man, we missed out on this. And those ones that did get the red bordered badge for doing 75%, it's like, oh, I want to be a member of the elite club. I want to be one of those ones standing up there at the end of the year in front of everybody else saying, hey, I had perfect attendance and sorry, you didn't. So, we also wanted to make, um, we wanted to make this affordable, you know, mm -hmm. trophies are expensive. Even if you're making them yourself, you're spending either, you know, a lot of time or a lot of money to give awards to your actors. And we wanted to make something that, um, is affordable. And I, I think the real, and the, I, when you first told me about the idea, you told us about it before on Don, you told us you were going to be there with it. Yep. Um, I remember that. And we kept a lid on it because you asked us to keep a lid on it. And <laughs> we're pretty good at that, contrary to popular belief. <laughs> so, but I started thinking about the idea. And I remember, and it's something that came up often at HauntCon in the seminars was how do you main, retain your actors? And one of the things was always, well, you mm, give them the recognition, you give them stuff and awards. And like, well, that's great. Trophies wind up in closets. Um, Gift cards get spent and tossed, you know, yep. thank you cards. Jeez, I'm probably swimming in birthday <laughs> and Christmas cards in this cluster duck I call an office. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know what I mean? But merit badges are something that is A, permanent, B, p visible if they sew it on, and C, not that much money. Um, well, exactly. We, it meets the three criteria for what should be, and it's for what should be a good gift for an actor or good motivation. But do you know how hard it is to sew a trophy under your shoulder and keep it there? <laughs> oh man! You it's know, so to sew it, you can just iron these patches right on. Well, that's Mad Max Haunter Road. Mm -hmm. Road. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, so that's so that's have, a good uh, thing to point out is that they're iron on. Yeah, patches. they're iron on patches. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Thank or you, you can so pin on. them on, or you okay. can sew them on, right? Um, and and we've even had people ask, well, do they have the Velcro back so I can change out the yearly patch? And it's like, oh, not yet, but maybe that's <laughs> something, <laughs> maybe that's something we need to do. <laughs> and that was our that was our biggest thing in Hong Kong was Daryl bought a bunch of badges, uh, prototypes, and uh, pretty much gave a lot of them. Out. I think you might have gave them all away, right? So you're just handing them out. Um, but it was, we were getting feedback from a lot of the, uh, there were screen park owners there. There were small, um, haunt owners who were home haunters, just trying to get the feedback of what they were wanting. Um, Alan Hopp, scare actor, trainer came by. He thought it was a great idea. So 
just getting a lot of feedback because we have different <clears throat> we're gonna have different uh, badges for uh, makeup artists and build crew and um uh talked to a guy tonight who wants one for his uh his actors that participate in the parades that they do so that may be a parade patch so we're we getting more- another new orleanian that sounds like a new orleanian uh <laughs> No, he's from Illinois, actually. Oh, okay. Bill. So, but yeah, it's um. So yeah, so we're listening to feedback, trying to create patches that people want, people they're going to use, uh, because we realize there's different people than just scare actors. So, and real fast, I'll mention it again before we close. Um, if you are interested in learning more, it's scare it s c a r e i t badges.com is the website, and from there you can go to the Kickstarter and participate there yeah and- exactly and um there's a whole bunch of different sponsorship levels we did want to keep it you know reasonable um if if you're a home haunter that's got 10 actors and you're open two nights uh for 50 bucks you can have a dozen of the uh the yearly badges the most dedicated because you know both you and your your spouse uh should have a badge too because you're the ones that you know he or she puts up with you and um, uh, as you're doing all this stuff. I but need you- a lot more than a merit badge for that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that is not going to cut it. Uh, but then you can still give away six awards. And that's for 50 bucks. You're going to get 18 badges, 12 of the yearly, six awards. And if, uh, even a home haunter can afford that. That's cheaper than pizza, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we do go up to, for those people that are looking for, you know, a uh, hundred or 200 badges because they have, they're a screen park and they have a lot of drop-in actors. Um, we have something, yeah, it's going to be more expensive, but you know, we can bring the price down to those to only a few dollars a badge. Um, and we'll also willing to do some custom work, but there's a limited number of custom uh, sponsorship spots available. So if you want a custom badge, Get into our Kickstarter, scareitbadges.com slash Kickstarter, and uh, swap one of those up, and then we'll work on on getting one of them Yeah, I'm looking at the Kickstarter now. There's only three of those available. Um, And Brian asked me, he goes, did you want to limit this to three? And it's like, as you mentioned, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, (laughs) Custom designing a dozen different badges for people we will get to it, but we're not going to be able to deliver them this year. So that's yeah. that's what uh, we limited that to three. We figure that between us and our artists, this is something that we can we can accomplish. Uh, and the important part, if people aren't familiar with a Kickstarter campaign or a crowdfunding campaign, we have thirty days from the end of uh, this, or end of February, so until the end of March. We have 30 days to raise 3000 or more dollars. If we don't meet that target, then nobody gets a badge, but nobody pays for anything either. So it's important that if you do want a custom badge, you get in there, snap up one of the custom badge rewards, uh, and then tell your friends and your enemies and gloat to them that you're bidding a custom badge. They should get in there too. Because then once we get to that $3,000 mark of of pledges this project is going forward and everybody will get their badge i want to thank you too jonathan for for uh pledging yeah (laughs) we pledge at a home haunter level because well we are home haunters but yeah yeah, i mean and i still have the badge that you gave me at haunt con Mm -hmm. um so god i haven't decided what i'm doing with it yet but i've got it it's actually sitting right here in my office not amongst the christmas and birthday cards and all the other clutter that makes things get lost so it is in a safe place, in a respected place. But well, maybe maybe we need to get into apparel as well and get you a shirt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I think that is kind of maybe the next evolution of this would be custom printing on a more individualized level because we have haunt. I mean, every haunt has haunt T-shirts. Even mm-hmm. we have. In fact, I'm still trying to give away some of our haunt T-shirts. We in fact, I was at Haunt Con. We learned about a deal in screen printing. It was like a buck a shirt. Mm-hmm. We might have gone a little crazy. It's a little more, <laughs> a little crazy, a lot of crazy. All right, a lot of crazy. <laughs> well, um, we'll give you our addresses after the show. You know, <laughs> yeah, good, we'll definitely. But, but yeah, we um, 
Actually, it was a little. It was actually significantly more than bucket shirt, but we did go crazy. Is the point? Um, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But but still, something like you said to represent the season rather than just the generic shirt, which is worn year after year after year, or something to indicate accolades and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and and we also want that recognition factor because, as I mentioned, that that some of the actors are maybe you know. Uh, a, a little cautious. Some are also reserved and they're good at acting, but you get them into a social situation and they're, they're kind of shy until they're playing a character. Um, but if you're walking down the street or you're at, you know, comic con and you see somebody that's got one of these badges, they're a member of your tribe. You can go up and talk to a total stranger because you'll see that badge on their sleeve you know, denoting the fact that they've made somebody pee in a haunted attraction. Uh, that's our <laughs> urination badge. Uh, that's the, um, the yellow one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yellow <laughs> draw. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, got, we got all kinds of ideas. All right. <laughs> but, you know, whether you're a home hunter, whether you run a, a, um, a scream park, a corn maze, uh, whether you're part of the build crew, whether you're in makeup, you specialize in prosthetics or even lighting. If we get, you know, as, as with, with the Kickstarter campaigns, you can set extended goals. So for example, um, our initial goal is $3,000. And if we do that, then we can produce these dozen badges. But if we get to $5,000 in sponsorships, then we're going to be able to produce um, like a five-year, 10-year, 15-year, 20, 25-year badge. Uh, and basically, we're going to do those as a stripe, just like the military has. Well, not exactly like the military has, mm -hmm. because we've got some ideas. And what we're going to do is we're going to run those past the people. But what happens if this blows up and people... Um, you know, start sponsoring us to the $8,000 mark. Well, we're probably going to release another five or six badges. We've probably got 40 different uh, badges that we want to make. We don't actually have the designs for them yet. So, you know, once we make some extra money, we can afford to have different badge styles. And if you sponsor us now for the 12 badges and we've only got the 12 designs, well, you can pick, you know, from those 12 designs. But if we manage to exceed our goals and get to the 8,000, you're going to have 17, 18 different badges, including the, the most dedicated one, the yearly one, uh, to choose from. So maybe we, we don't release the um, uh, corn maze badge on this first, uh, first initial 12 because we've got some for creepiest character and scariest character and the urination badge for making somebody pee. But if we get enough sponsorship and enough pledges towards our Kickstarter campaign, uh, we definitely want to have those five-year badges. We want to have the, um, the corn maze badge. Cause we know there's a lot of people out there that, that have corn mazes. So, you know, giving, that recognition to your staff and they can wear it proudly down the street and you go to like a, a boy scout jamboree you go to haunt con or midwest or west coast hunters convention and you can see other people wearing their shirts or their backpacks or their hats that have these badges on them and you know hey you run a home hunt too right oh you work at a scream park what do you do Oh, I see you're part of the build crew at the Scream Park. That's neat. Well, I got to say, I love the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, to the nice folks at home, it's scaretbadges.com, S C A R E I T, badges, B A D G E S. If you can't spell badges, I probably can't help you. Uh, .com, go there. There's a big button to kickstart a campaign. You can contribute there. You know, you guys do so, so much. I, I can only imagine your workload. I mean, we we're, we just do a completely unedited podcast, basically. <laughs> I am truly humbled by your work ethic. But, you know, thank you for all that you do, and thank you for all the contributions you guys make to the haunted attraction community. That warms my heart to hear that. And thank you very much uh, for having us on the show. Uh, thank all of the people. Uh, we've got a gentleman by the name of, goes by the name of Dr. Ravencroft, who is, uh, working on editing our video right now. And, uh, uh, all of the people, we got so much positive response and it's like, oh, this is, this is a good idea. How come nobody's done it before now? 
<laughs> well, I don't know, <laughs> but I'm here to do it now. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for the kind words. I want to, I want to say thank you for inviting us to the party in New Orleans that you had. Oh, the, yeah, that was a great that story. Was, that was awesome. And I've actually listened to every single one of your podcast episodes as well. I'm deeply, deeply so, sorry. Every single one of them. <laughs> the apology letter is in the mail, and I think it needs a mirror badge of its own. <laughs> no, I actually, actually get a lot out of them, so thank scary you. Badge. <laughs> a scary badge. A scary badge, yeah. Yes, you're right, a scary badge. It needs a scary badge of its own. <laughs> exactly, maybe we can get that. Oh, okay, I'm writing this down. Podcast, right on, podcast listener. Okay. <laughs> Don't gotcha. forget Haunt Widow, too. Actually, that yes. was that was that your was, idea, and there was other people that had mentioned that to us at HauntCon Crystal. That was so funny because yeah. uh, you run a, a Facebook group for Haunt Widows, correct? Um, uh, our Haunt Widow does. Ellie does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Does. Our okay. girlfriend does. Yeah, because that's what that's how she copes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, yeah. And it's funny because we think that they deserve a badge too. Uh, yes. I agree. we're thinking for a design, a nice little black rose, you know, wouldn't that be just kind of, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that would be it. Um, also the hearse that you've already got designed might work. <laughs> well, that's the other thing is, uh, in addition to, um, Halloween and horror, uh, I'm also an honorary member of a hearse club. I don't have a, a long wagon myself, yeah. but I, I do hang out with quite a few people who do. Uh, and I'm also a Krampus. Um, so mm -hmm. those are some other badges that I think we want to expand into yeah. once we get uh, enough, get this off the ground. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming on and spending the hour with us. It has been wonderful hanging with you guys. And like I said, uh, just to recap, absolutely everything we talked about, they are Haunt Topic. This is Brian and Daryl of Haunt Topic Radio, which is hauntopic.com. And that'll take you to Scary Visions, I think it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, they are also Haunter's Toolbox, which you can find on Facebook as the free Facebook group. And then you can go to hauntertoolbox.com and become a member there, either a free member or a paid member, hopefully a paid member. Um, you get more stuff. Get a lot more stuff that way and get access to the experts, the videos, the tutorials, and all that jazz that is special to that site. And then these mad bastards are also doing Scarret Badges, S-C-A-R-E-I-T badges.com. They have a Kickstarter campaign trying to raise $3,000 um, to do some awesome badges for actors and others who people who work on the haunt. Guys, I y'all are nuts. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, take that as a compliment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why be normal? That's yeah. well, thank you again. Um, and, but until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly. I forgot my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you had too many to remember. Oh, my God. This is Haunt Weekly. We're on Haunt Weekly, right? Haunt yes. Weekly, episode 118. Speaking with Daryl and Brian of just about every goddamn thing you can think of. We will see you guys. <laughs> Next time.